Okay, thank you, thank you so much. I, I have a bowl up there with a microphone every Sunday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon on KKNT. I want to thank you all very much for having me back. It is exactly, Billy, it is exactly Donna, exactly five months since I have been here before. How many were here the last time and were sitting on the edge of your seat gasping for air? Well, we'll have more gasping for air today. Thank you. It's quite an honor to be here. I want to thank uh, the organizers, my team, Chris's team, the Sheriff's Department for being here and for making sure that we were going to have an event and you were all going to be fine. So give us a big hand for the Sheriff's Department. Are you in shock and awe every day you turn on the news? I just added three more broadcasts a week to help you be more shock and awe. But I did so because it's not easy getting the truth, is it? You flip stations from one cable network to another. You are not sure who's telling you the truth. Is it Fox? Is it CNN? Is it conservative talk radio? My show tells the truth. And that gave birth to the Benghazi Truth Tour. Much has happened since I've been with you last. Remember the attacks, Montreal, Ottawa, Sydney, Brussels, Paris, Jerusalem, Copenhagen, but let's not forget a beheading in Oklahoma. We are all under attack, Christians and Jews. Not a day goes by, 29,000 attacks on Christians, Jews, and people around the world by those who praise Allah. It is not a religion. It is a political movement. Do you understand that? It's not easy to come before you when you need to have a security detail take you to the studio. As was the day, the first day, I interviewed Chris Peranto because I knew that people don't want you to hear the truth and those would be many people, Republicans, Democrats, Islamists, around the world and in your community. As of this morning, here are the following capitals in the world under control of Iran, Shia, Iran, obviously Tehran, Damascus, Syria, Beirut, Lebanon, they're closing in on Baghdad. Shia is in the northwest, northeast part of Baghdad. Marines have been surrounded. The U.S. Embassy, where I have friends right now, report to me every day when they go up in the air to see how close ISIS might be. The Houthis in Yemen. Have you heard Barack Obama say, that is our hallmark country, Yemen. It is now the place where Iran has control. The Houthis are in control. We hand, the Marines have handed over their weapons, and now Iran is in control. Also with Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. So much for Obama's agenda and his success stories and his foreign policy. Do you feel safe under this administration? Do you feel that your government is protecting you today? Do you feel safe in your communities? Are you under the false pretense that we are here and that is over there? It came home to roost in Prescott this week. It came home to roost. As you see Fox and CNN strolling up the highway to get to Prescott, Arizona, you realize that even your children are the most vulnerable and the most precious possessions you have. And when you send them off to college, and when they see a petition that might be from the International Solidarity Movement, even I would be moved to sign that petition. 
But those movements on college campuses managed by the Muslim Student Association, which are 900 Muslim student associations around this country, are managing your children. I know of, telling them who is good, who is bad. Israel, divest. Get out of the West Bank. Get out of Somalia. They kill babies. Here's a dead baby. Here's a picture. Here's the lethal narrative. And before you know it, young people are signing petitions and going overseas. I have five friends fighting in Iraq right now at the age of 25. Ladies and gentlemen, Al-Qaeda is not decimated. It is more. It is emboldened. It is the parent company, the mother load. It is ISIS, it is Boko Haram, it is Jamaat al-Fukra, which runs your, your training camps in the United States. It is Anwar al-Sharia, it is al-Nusra Front. It is through Europe, it is through North Africa, it is in Indonesia, and ladies and gentlemen, it is in your backyard. It is on the march. Remember those lone wolves you've heard so much about? They're not lone wolves. What do they all have in common? They all have one thing in common, and that is a caliphate. Did you ever wish that you never heard the word caliphate? Do you say Islam more every day than you sit, talk, to, talk to your ministers, pastors, or read the Bible? The President of the United States can't say Islamic Jihad, but on our lips every single day and on the news is the word ISIS. And it's not even ISIS, let's call it what they want us to call it, the Islamic State. Now here we have something to tell you. I travel this country doing assessments in every city I go in. I have been for two years in cities in the Bible Belt and across this country. I find penetration from the Muslim Brotherhood everywhere I go. But nothing was more insidious than what I found a few weeks ago in Augusta, Georgia. An imam, you must all know about this, interfaith dialogue with the Presbyterians, the Methodists, the Catholics, everyone. The imam I found out with the help of our good friend, Dr. Zudi Jasser, who helped me. The imam who has people sitting in the Baptist Sunday school classes is an operative for Bashar al-Assad. And he has been to Scottsdale, Arizona to raise money for an Islamic revolution. And he is back in Augusta, talking to the priests, talking to the ministers, talking to the pastors. It's everywhere, my friends, and it's in Prescott. In Arizona, your airport is cleaned, your planes are, on, are cleaned every single day by a company out of Denmark that only hires Somalis. They have unrestricted access to your aircraft. And their pilots are frantic. And they tell me, what can you do? And I say, if city council won't listen to me, I wrote the $10 million contract, what can I do? Ladies and gentlemen, there is something we can do. We can join the movement to stop this incredible nonsense. Keep that over there, but don't bring your garbage over here to our communities. We won't have it. There was a magazine in 2005 before I bring Chris on to explain to you why I, how I found Chris. The magazine was called Dash Spiegel, and in 2005, and I have a copy of it here, someone who shared a cell with an Al-Qaeda operative, Al-Zahari, wrote, the caliphate is coming in seven phases. The first phase is known as the awakening. 2000, and, 2000 to 2003, their calling card. What was their calling card? 9-11. The sixth phase, 2015 and 2016, according to Al-Qaeda themselves, believes that from 2016 onwards, there will be a period of total confrontation. As soon as the caliphate has been declared by the Islamic army, it will instigate the fight between the believers and the non-believers. We're there, ladies and gentlemen. We are right there. When you start seeing in Baptist churches people dressed in Muslim garb sitting there trying to convince them 
to worship Allah and that not nobody in the community will say anything. Why is that? Because Christianity says love thy enemy and Allah and Islam say kill thy enemy. When you see someone in a cage being burned, when you see children being beheaded, when you know that there are 900 Muslim student associations, Islamic circles of North America, in the United States of America, and you're sending your children off to college to be indoctrinated about how Hamas and Hezbollah, and you don't know how to stop it, when we do know from the Gatestone Institute that Hezbollah is not on the border of the United States, but 50 miles in the border of the United States in Arizona, working with the cartel and selling their drugs to fund their movement, what do you do? Eat more salad or get busy. <laughs> you get busy. And before we conclude today, we will tell you how. When there are six people in the White House, at the top down, Arif Ali Khan, Rashid Hussain, Salam al Mabarki, Imam Mohad Mahdi, and Ibo Patel, who manage the affairs of the President on Homeland Security. What do you do? You make noise, and you work from the bottom up, and it's time for change. And this group is going to lead the charge. You are the largest Republican women's group in the, company, in the country, and you will be the largest task force in the nation to lead this country out of the abyss. <laughs> How I found the man I affectionately call Ranger One. <laughs> For two years, I have been around this country going zero footprint. It was McCain, it was Lindsey Graham, it was the Republicans, it was the Democrats. Everybody knew there was time running, things were happening, and I couldn't prove it. And then someone said, uh, Chris Pimonto just friended you on Twitter. And I said, get him on the show. Because when you have an eyewitness account to the Battle of Benghazi that supports every argument you have ever made about our government, Republicans and Democrats, you hurry up and get him on the show. 40 minutes into that show, I said, will you go on tour with me? And what did you say? People sit on my board of advisors, the most esteemed leaders in the country. They want you to know, the Benghazi Commission wants you to know what Chris will tell you today, the before story. Why were they there? What were they doing there? And why did nobody come to help them? It is my great honor to introduce you to Chris Tonto Paranto, former Ranger.